born in Africa, grew up here, and yet we didn't know it at all. By the time we were 25, we knew that we had to go in search of the real Africa, something beyond, something out there. For us, the best way to get to know a place is to understand its top predators. Out here, that's the big cats. These are the iconic symbols of everything we think of when we hear the words wild Africa. So we came out here following a dream, romance, an adventure, and we certainly found it. Wild Africa is a place where few people belong, truly belong, but these are two of them, and this is their story. National Geographic explorers Derek and Beverly Joubert are at a new stage of their lifelong quest, living with big cats. For 25 years, the Joubert's have followed lions in Africa, trying to understand the complex relationships they have with their prey and how that impacts on the whole environment. Lions have to be the most chilling and most iconic of them all, a symbol of that sheer wildness. And this is what we came for. It's all about understanding who we are and putting that in context with the big predators on Earth. It's a personal quest, a passion, even an obsession, in a place where just finding your subject is challenge enough. I love this life. We get to look into the eyes of predators, of death in many ways, each day. And that challenges you. We get to just a few paces away and know a few hundred lions just by sight. They're all different. Their latest project takes them into the heart of the Okavango in Botswana, a place they have called home for many years. They have witnessed over 2,000 successful hunts. They understand that look in a lion's eyes. We're not here to interfere or judge what they do. We've developed this non-interference ethos over the years. I try to capture the essence of the movement, not all the details necessarily. While the visual impact of a scene like this is spectacular enough, without the sound, you can't even begin to understand what it is really like. Watch a scene without sound, for example. And now, as I'm hearing it on the day, through a powerful microphone, so we can stay at a respectable distance. It just comes alive. The reality of the moment suddenly churns your stomach with anxiety. In the end, the entire package conveys to you, the audience, not only what it's like to be here at this moment, what we see and hear, but some of the emotions that underpin all this, even the emotions of the various animal characters in our films. But their quest to understand the big key predators is now taking them beyond the lion prides of Africa. There are other cats here, more secretive cats, that very few people truly understand. With this amount of lines around, it would be tricky. Derek and Beverly will be spending the next few years of their lives searching for the most elusive of those major carnivores in Africa. Somebody's been down here. They're close. Today the cat they're tracking is a leopard. Now they've found a single footprint in the sand, the real challenge begins. It's not a random art, more of a science, this tracking down of an animal. I started taking exact measurements of the footprints of each cat. 
Now we can tell 26 leopards apart, just from a quick measurement. I'm just going to follow these tracks for a moment or two. Okay. A moment or two can mean anything up to nine hours, which is when the sun goes down and he loses the track. But Derek is a good tracker. I have seen him go into a mode where he excludes everything else in the world beyond that track and the energy of the animal he is after. There's not much that will distract him. He'll stand in one spot for an hour at a time until he can see it in the sand. The fur of a kill is what he's been looking for. He's also done enough time out here on foot to know when something like an elephant charge is serious or just posturing. He forms a picture in his mind of what happened here a few hours before. The small fragments of bone and a twig with wet blood confirms just how long ago she was here. What signs did you find out there? We'll just check back here behind us. Um, fresh track. That looks like she killed a baby baboon early as the morning headed off that way. I've been hearing squirrels in that direction. Where about? Towards the ebony forest. Yeah, no, that's the direction of the track. It's a constant piecing together of signs, subtle clues. And this is what they've been searching for. <laughs> you have to ask, did we find her? Or did she find us? But today, they've been let in on a special secret. Finding a leopard is rare enough. Discovering a cub this age is like stumbling across a precious jewel on the forest floor, the start of a whole new chapter in their lives. It's a small miracle for us, a daunting one at the same time, because we'll commit whatever time it takes to do the story justice. Judging from the size and milky eyes, I'll place her at about 10 days old. Of all the 26 leopards we could have found and followed today, it just happened to be this one. It's still steel gray eyes, know only what is natural to it. The soft features of a caring mother, the safe refuge of its den. Some filmmakers in the background, a distant tree, or just part of the scenery during these early formative days. It's what we try to do, sit quietly and just fit in. We're not going anywhere. And as luck would have it, she has one very distinct spot, right there, between the top two rows of her whiskers on her right lip. This is a cat we will recognize forever. When cubs are left alone, they're vulnerable. This is when most cubs are killed. So the Joubert's must stay back and not get too involved. When she goes off to hunt, she moves directly to a sausage tree and enters a whole world of interactions. The nectar from the flowers attracts just about everything. Sadly for her, that includes bees. amazing what you can learn by just sitting and watching. The flowers attract baboons. The leopard must now really slink back into concealment or evoke their wrath. It's a little known fact, baboons will attack and sometimes kill leopards, using their numbers to mob them and their vicious teeth to rip them apart. Discretion and a quiet retreat are best for now. But they're here for something else something as sweet as the nectar of the baboon gods. And as they gorge themselves, flowers drop down to eager mouths below. There is still ample sweetness in the burgundy petals they discard. It's an intricate web that includes all life here. Today, the baboons are on a sugar high and off to their next delights, leaving the impala vulnerable and focused on their own quick nibble. 
This is her chance. This is an extremely efficient kill. A throat hold, quick and silent. Very different from the big lion kills that we used to working with. Derek and Beverly met at high school and after a whirlwind romance headed off to the bush to campfires under the stars and a life under canvas. What for us may be a camping adventure is their life. The flimsy canvas wouldn't keep a lion at bay and yet for over two decades it's been their last line of defense and so far held up quite well. They've lost camps to other things, storms and falling trees, and once, during a drought, an elephant walked through and destroyed their home to get a single glass of water. But this is home, an office, and a place to keep some of those precious things out of the weather. Let's have a look at that, though. Isn't that interesting, the way that's moving? I like that. I like part of it, too. You know, what I like most of it. A field camp just feels like we need to work, research, write, plan books, and film. It's the most stimulating place in the world for us. And of course, it's our home. But they're seldom alone. Because the neighbors can see predators better than they can, it's worth listening just a little more closely. Tonight, whatever it is, is right there. At the campfire, there's a struggle going on. A chair has been knocked over. Ashes scattered. Oh my gosh, will you take a look at this? It's kind of eerie, isn't it? We were just here. Eerie and beautiful at the same time. A newborn impala, attracted to the ash of their fire, has been attacked by a ten foot long python. Even just after midnight, the cameras come out, the lights are set. The action, though, happens in its own time, at its own pace. What a phenomena of nature. I mean, this is absolutely amazing. I've always wondered how this is possible. This is an unpredictable place. And for the Joubert's, an unpredictable life full of extraordinary moments to capture and record in sheer wonderment. Around um, this little impala, and you just see air coming out of its mouth. I'm not sure if it's the python's air. I think it's the impala getting trapped in the python and then coming out through its mouth. Going days without sleep or spending hours being bitten by mosquitoes, though it may produce only a few seconds of film, in time, these moments accumulate into an invaluable scientific record. This is, this is incredible. For us, it's like we're scouts or explorers of this environment. It's esophagus in its lungs, right up front. As the python devours its prey, both whole and alive, Derek and Beverly log up yet another first for them. And it's these surprises that keep them so intensely interested in life around them. Yeah, well, I think that's 